So, hi everyone, welcome back to another podcast, another bonus brunch session from TMAC Live. This is our third bonus brunch session and today we're going to be following on from our fitness brunch, which was called Menopause and Me. So we were talking about everything menopause and of course with the fitness element we were talking about different things that we can do in order to make the process a lot easier for us, whether we're going through it now, about to be going through it, um, not even thinking about it or post-menopausal, um, we're here to kind of take the conversation a little bit further, answer some more questions um, and just keep the conversation going, like we say. <laughs> and I'll just give you guys a little bit of an intro if you don't already know. My name is Tola. So I rose in sports therapy, personal training and these lovely female fitness brunches a month, every month. And we want to bring to you and showcase men's health topics that we don't ordinarily talk about and just empower you and inspire you to take these um the information that you've learned on your own paths in your own way so without further ado we're going to pass you over to our one of our lovely guest hosts that was, was there with us last week um her name is Libby and she's a yoga instructor so she actually took us through some of the um, moves that we can do to make the menopause menopausal symptoms better so she's actually going to answer some of the questions that were sent over um following the brunch that we didn't actually have time to talk about so I'll pass you over to Libby she's going to talk to you about who she is where she's from and we'll just take it from there all right well thank you Tola thank you for inviting me so my name is Libby Stevenson and I'm a yoga teacher and I specialize and I'm certified to teach yoga to women at different stages of womanhood from pregnancy to postnatal to perimenopause, menopause. I'm also a therapeutic being practitioner. And what I do is I <coughs> help women express their emotions and um, explore their feelings through non-talking therapy. Um, and I use movement, in particular yoga and uh, creative arts. I'm a mom of four, I'm postmenopausal, and I'm originally from New York City, but now I live in London and London is my home. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Side note, do you, how do you find the difference between London and New York? I love it because um, mm-hmm. to raise children in New York City, like New York City is very hectic, very fast paced. Mm. So for me, it was a, a better lifestyle choice to raise children in Lon- London yeah. because you have the parks, you can walk everywhere. Yeah. There's stuff for uh, adults and children but even the museums cater to the adults and the children so you know the theaters and I just felt there was a lot for them and a lot for me too yeah it was kind of a happy medium and it's all relative I mean it's a lot slower pace in London compared Mm. to New York (laughs) exactly yeah you know so it it was a better choice for me in terms of quality of life yeah I love that that sounds good and you still kind of get a city feel um yes. without yeah. going too crazy and just being yeah. in the sticks but yeah you know, it's a good mix <laughs> yeah it's a very agree. good mix yeah oh lovely okay so um one of the questions was my hot flashes aren't as intense as the ones my friends describe this normal yes it's very normal and uh what I would say to that is that um there's 31 symptoms to the menopause and as women we all experience similar symptoms but that doesn't mean that the severity and the duration of the symptoms are the same from woman to woman. So although I experience hot flushes and your friend will experience hot flushes, they won't be the same hot flushes. Hers might might be longer in duration and more intense. Mine were extremely mild. So although we, as women, we all go through the menopause and we will experience symptoms, we may share the same symptoms, but again, the severity and duration will vary from women to women because your menopause is unique to you and your right. body. Um, and we may not even experience the same symptoms. So I might have symptoms that someone else doesn't experience, but that doesn't mean that they're not going through the menopause. They're just experiencing different ones to the right. ones I'm experiencing. Yeah. So that's completely yeah. normal. Yeah. And that's really helpful, actually. Um Let's get back into it. So um, I know there's so much information and sometimes Google is your friend, but then it's actually your enemy with the amount of information and the amount of misinformation actually on this. So um, would you recommend taking hormone replacement therapy? Okay. Well, that's very, that depends on the person. 
So it's very individual. I would say to explore all your options. So look at natural approaches, look at HRT, Mm -hmm. And then based on your information, you can make the best choice for yourself. You can do both together. You can have natural approaches and HRT at the same time, um, or you can just do natural approaches or you can just do HRT and you see what works for you. And Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with taking HRT. Sometimes it gets a bad rap because I guess you should be going the natural way. I don't know. But Mm -hmm. my thing is do what's right for you and your body. Some women's symptoms are so severe that natural remedies they need more than that they need prescription drug drugs so just find out what's out there in terms of hrt there's different ways of taking hrt you can take them in a pill form you can Mm -hmm. take them in a gel form that you rub on your arm or your thigh you can take them on a patch which then you stick on your hip there's different ways of taking them and that's a, a question for you and your doctor but i would say just explore all the different options. I would look into the natural approaches. I would talk to a doctor about different types of HRT and what would work for you. And it might be a combination of them. Okay. Okay. That's quite helpful. Um, and obviously because we are talking about hormones and they they can be all over the place. They can be sporadic. How exactly does yoga help with alleviating the symptoms of menopause? So yoga is a holistic approach to health and well-being. And a lot of people think that, uh, well, certainly in the West, people focus on the physical aspect of yoga. But actually, um, when you do yoga, so when you're in a pose or when you're flowing from pose to pose, the whole body gets involved. You're affecting the brain, the nervous system, the immune system. So all parts of the body are affected. And the reason why yoga works in menopause is because when you're going through the menopause, you would experience a number of symptoms at the same time. So you'll get the achy joints, the forgetfulness, the hot flushes and uh, feelings of overwhelm. They're Mm -hmm. all happening. It's not like one happens, finishes and the other one starts. They're all happening at the same time. So because the yoga is holistic, the minute you do yoga, you're easing them all at the same time. Right. So it's a it's a holistic approach yoga to an issue, menopause, which is holistic. You know, it's actually the only way to really treat it through exercise because you're getting to it all at the same time. Right. Okay. So for example, um, one of the poses that's really good for the menopause is a uh, child's pose. Yeah. And it is a restorative pose. So just being in the pose relaxes you and releases tension because anxiety, feelings of overwhelm, heart palpitations, those are all symptoms of the menopause. So it can help with that. Lower back pain, it helps mm-hmm. with that. Um, digestive problems, which are also a symptom of the menopause, con- constipation. Um, and being in child's pose can help things move along your gut. Um, and then depending on how you have your arms, either forward, mm-hmm. you get a stretch in the neck or by your side, um, you're opening up the thoracic spine. So you're getting so many other benefits from being in that pose other than the one you got into it for. So right. if you have digestive problems and you thought I need it, you know, I need to get, get things moving. You go into child's pose, but you're getting all the other benefits too, or you have lower back pain and then you get benefits for digestion, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. so okay. one, one pose addresses many symptoms yeah which is really good yeah yeah I think it's really good that you know there's actual moves that can help because with menopause it can sometimes feel so sudden it feels like a time in your life where you're you're least prepared um like we talked about in the brunch um your let's say for example your menstrual cycle you sometimes have a chat with um, a mom or somebody a little bit older that they will somewhat prepare you for it so it although it can be scary you have an idea of what's coming whereas the menopause there is um, a negative stigma kind of surrounding it that you know you're just going to get all these symptoms and you just have to deal with it um, and figure it out along the way so I think being best prepared is so helpful and the fact that there are specific moves particularly with the yoga that is great you mentioned earlier about um, the negative aspect of menopause. And I think that's associated with the process of aging, that Mm -hmm. women as they age are past it. 
and older and um, you know perhaps they feel less attractive when well, they see their bodies changing mm -hmm. but the menopause happens to all women it's a natural process of aging and i think just because in the west the you know society is youth driven that doesn't mean that as we go as we journey through the menopause we can't reinvent ourselves that it can't be a positive time in our life exactly. um, certainly i reinvented myself in my 50s as i went through the menopause and it's that time in, of life actually when your children start leaving home you find yourself with a lot more time on your hands and a lot more time to figure out what you need and actually studies were done on the hormone estrogen it's the hormone that makes us women and it's the caring hormone so the minute we hit menopause, it starts to decline. And that caring for others starts to decline. Not that we don't care about people anymore, but we start turning more inward and caring more for ourselves. And that's the time for us to do what we need to do for ourselves. So it could actually be almost a reawakening of doing the stuff that we've always wanted to do, but never had the time to. So it's it's a good thing to keep in mind that, it you know, this is it's like a new spring for a woman as opposed to you know, a winter that is where everything is dying. It's actually a new, you know, a time for reinvention. I love that. Um, that is absolutely amazing. And it's so true. I think the media, not just the media, just in the, as a whole, the society has put this thing where they're youth driven and getting older is actually not great, but it happens to, every single one of us every day you are getting older so there's nothing wrong with it and it's actually like you said it's a beautiful thing and there's a chance to reinvent yourself and um that is a very interesting point that your caring hormone actually decreases and that's great because <laughs> I'm looking forward to the point where I don't have to care so much for others I, don't get me wrong I love it at the moment I love caring for my son and my family but I, you know, you do want to care for yourself more, but some, sometimes that mum guilt thing is a real thing. Um, so yeah, I think that I'm looking forward to that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so it's a real thing. It's, it's scientifically proven that, you know, we have that hormone in us and it reduces. Fantastic. And I, I love that you said it's a new spring because listen, we, we all are going to get older and it's a beautiful thing that happens to us. We mentioned this in the brunch that women are super women. We have superpowers and this is just one of many that we have. Our bodies are a major part of a lot of our lives and what we do. Um, it's talked about all around the world. Women's bodies are the talk of the conversation so many times. Um, what goes on and if you're doing this of it, what, everything about women's bodies is always a hot topic so this is just a beautiful time for us to embrace it rather than you know neglect it or feel like you know you're, you're at the end of something actually at the beginning of something really really beautiful so yeah thanks Libby again for touching on that that's really good <laughs> my pleasure more to life than just the physical symptoms you know mm. like look at all the other aspects of your life but they just focus on this that and the other thing and I think that's, that just brings people down and, and makes it such, you know, it makes you think that it's going to just be negative physical symptoms. I had the physical symptoms, they were really mild. And actually, you know, I couldn't even complain to a doctor about them because they didn't keep me awake at night or anything. So, you know, it, it could happen to other people too that they do get the, the symptoms, but they're so mild, it's like, okay, you know, I can live with that. Yeah. And do you know what? That's a, that's such an that's another good point. Is that with social media, it's like a magnifying glass. It really, really zooms in on some things and it exaggerates a lot of things. Sometimes it's not actually that bad, or it's not actually that good, if you like. So just um, take everything with a pinch of salt. And even for me, later on in my fitness, there in life, it's not black and white. We don't. If you're fit, you don't just look one particular way. Or if you're healthy or unhealthy, you don't just look a particular way. It comes with so many things. Um, our mental health, of course, is important. Our physical health is very important. And um, there's so many things as a holistic, um, from a holistic viewpoint, that are 
to be considered when it comes to our health in particular. Health is such a broad term um, and it could be your financial health or it could be spiritual health, your mental health, just physical health. Not all of them um, might be full. You, your tank might not be full all the time. So I'd say for anyone listening, when it, not just for menopause, I think for anything in terms of health, take it with a pinch of salt and remember what is good for you, what you feel good in. Um, just because a textbook says that, you know, your hips need to be at a 90 degree angle and yours are at 95 doesn't mean that you're weird, you know, you're you. <laughs> um, I think the gentle movements also that complement it really well because that can be another thing that's daunting if people are not very active to start with um, just jumping into a really high intense um, new sport or new workout, if you like, then it can also be quite scary starting something new that's so major <laughs> and then your body's going through all these things. You thought you knew it all these years and now it's doing something else. So I think that's amazing. Um, so you kind of jumped the gun really with the, that was the question I was going to ask you <laughs> next about the poses and what, what we're best with dealing with the hormonal balances. And I think you answered that perfectly. So thank you. Um, just really to close up and finish up, would you give any final tips um, for ladies who are going through their menopause um, right now and before they even go through their menopause and also if you have yourself what experiences did you go through and how did you deal with them at the time yeah um well the reason why um i became a menopause yoga teacher and because and the reason why i became a, yoga, a pregnancy and postnatal yoga teacher is because when i went through those stages there was nothing there was no discussion, there was no information. And then as uh, more yoga opened up for pregnancy, postnatal and perimenopause, I thought those are the women I want to teach because I didn't have that. There was no discussion on anything. There was no information, no advice, no support, nowhere to go to to just say, I'm feeling like this, is this normal? So my experience when I went through the menopause was I had no clue I was going through the menopause. I noticed I had very heavy periods and they were shorter and I knew this is weird. But again, I didn't know it was perimenopause because no one ever told me that that's what happens. You know, so I had no clue. Um, and then I start, I always tracked my cycle and I noticed that I was skipping months. So that told me, okay, something is happening here. And then eventually one day it just stopped. Like you would skip one month and then you'd get it again. And then eventually it just stopped. And again, no one really explains that to you. I kind of assumed one day it would just stop, but it, it's not like that. It's kind of a trickle effect. Exactly. And the symptoms that I had were very, very mild. I did have some hot flushes, but they were very mild. I never had night sweats. I had some foggy brain. Um, and now, only now that women are talking about it so openly, I realized, oh, I had that and it was a menopause symptom. One of them was feeling anxiety drying on, on the motorway. I just thought I was being weird, you know, like, what's wrong with me? I've done this, you know, why am I feeling like this? And I thought maybe it's too much caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's something that happens to women as they go through the, you know, it's, it's this whole anxiety, it triggers anxiety in different mm -hmm. ways. I have no clue. So the idea, what I would say to women is there are now support groups out there. There are more women talking about it. And I think even just bringing it up yourself to someone like your mother or you, someone you know has been through it or might be going through it. And usually their age is an indicator. You know, mm. if, if they're in their 50s, they probably are going through it. Um, and I think people are now more willing to open up and talk about it. And that's a great thing. Because yeah. then you learn from each other. And, you know, the yoga is a great way to ease the symptoms. And menopause yoga is designed for that, to ease mm -hmm. your symptoms. But the other thing that yoga does is it brings women together um, and, and, and it allows them to talk about what they're experiencing. And a lot of women don't get that opportunity to see feet, you know, see, to feel heard and seen and to hear someone else say, oh, I'm feeling this way. Oh my goodness, that's me too. And that can be so cathartic just to know what you're experiencing is normal. 
So I would say to women to just get your information. There is a lot of information out there now. Um, more people are talking about it, but even on Facebook, there are some support groups you can join and you don't have to say anything. You can just listen just to see what they're talking about, what they're complaining about so that when it happens to you, you're like, oh, okay, this is normal. And this is what I'm experiencing. And, um, and just to get informed because the more informed you are, the better choices you can make for yourself. And that's what I would say, just get your information and, and then take it from there. Yeah. 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 And I think that's an excellent point to end on. Um, the more inf informed that you are, the better choices that you can make for yourself. And that's why the, the brunch is here, the female fitness brunch is here to empower you so that you feel more equipped to just deal with these things that are coming with life. And they're not just a surprise. And, you know, you, we're not scared to talk about our bodies and how they move and what we can do with them. And, you know, we're not just a shell or we're not just mum. We are individuals that have feelings and we go through things as well. So, yeah, thank you so much, Libby, for um, talking with me today and thank you for the great information again and great energy as always she has a lovely smile <laughs> if you're listening to this I suggest you go into the YouTube and check her smile out <laughs> so you can yeah. see she looks great so yeah thank you so much Libby for that and we are over and out you can follow us um, at T Mac Life on Instagram and you can also follow Libby Stevenson Wellbeing on instagram too and find out more information about the menopause and how you can get involved in our future female fitness brunches thanks everyone bye